Hey guys, welcome back. I'm working on the 59 Atala. Right now I am working on the exhaust flanges. They were not going tight to the motor, so I gotta make a little bit of a bracket type deal to get those to go back tight to the motor. Um, I'm not gonna record that part because I can't really, I mean, it's kind of hard to do it under the car, but pulled off the passenger side uh, one so far. I'm getting ready to put that back on, then I'm gonna take off the driver's side. After that, um, I want to put the front wheels on the car, set it back down on the ground, probably put the back wheels on as well, and then um, probably reassemble the windshield, all that stuff, and then uh, figure out how to get power to under the dash so I can check the ignition key and stuff like that. Um, I have to check the fuses and all that stuff and see what's going on with that. So I'll come back in a little bit after I get these uh, exhaust pipes put back up and we'll get the tires and rims put on. I'm sorry, the, we'll get the tires put on. They're already on the rims. Okay, I got the exhaust bolted back up there. Um, I have to slide over this one exhaust, which I still have to figure out how, but that exhaust pipe right there is rubbing on the oil filter. So I need to uh, mess with the brackets over there by the muffler so I can move it over. I also got the lower radiator hose installed while it was up in the air. So now let's get these front tires put back on. Um, first time in a long time, it's going to be back on tires. So we'll throw these two front tires on and then we can do the, uh, get it down on the ground. I still have to tighten up the lower radiator hose on the inside. Um, can't really reach it from underneath. I went and bought all new lug nuts from the parts store because uh, I didn't want to put rusty ones back on here. Now these front rims are actually a quarter inch deeper dish than the uh, rear because of the disc brakes. Usually it's the other way around and the rear are usually the wider ones but not in this case. Make sure it's going to clear. Obviously the white walls are filthy right now, but they'll clean up. I don't have the hubcaps with me yet either. I forgot to get them the other day, but that's okay. Not a big deal right now. Now we got another issue. Bolt pattern doesn't look right. Bolt pattern's not right. Why is that? Let me measure that now. Okay, well, it turns out that the front brakes are four and three quarter, or four and five eighths. Spacing. These are four and a half inch rims. So, for now, I can just tighten them up. Just won't be able to drive them like that. We're gonna have to find two more rims with the four and five eighths bolt pattern. Because when I measure, or am I wrong here? Unless this one rim is different. Hmm. Measure from center to center. And uh, the other three rims are four and a half. And then the rears are four and a half the, on the car. That's four and a half. Is this one rim wrong? I think I have one rim that's four and three quarters. So if that's the case, we gotta find a rim. have another one and see all right same back spacing fits so we have a rim that's the wrong bolt pattern and it looks like just one rim is 
So either A, we put it inside the Continental kit and let the guy know that, hey, this is not the right bolt pattern. We're not gonna be able to use it as a spare or we gotta find another rim, which I don't know if I might have one laying around actually that I can sandblast and paint. I'll have to look and see what I got. And it turns out that one of these four rims has a different backspacing too. So, don't know what I'll do with that yet, but I'll figure it out. At least we can get the fronts on and get it down on the ground. I'm not gonna go super crazy tightening these. I'll torque them by hand afterwards. Make sure that they spin freely. The brakes have not been bled yet either. Okay, so that seems good there. Bearings seem good, because I packed those bearings and everything. So that doesn't seem like there's any slop in it or anything. So let's go ahead and throw on this side. I didn't know they made a four and five eighths, unless it's four and three quarters. It was just off on my measurements, but I don't think so. It's always something with this car, I swear. It's like I, every time I turn around, something's wrong. And you know, I never even thought to check it either. I just got the four rims, I sandblasted them and I painted them. I never even thought they were gonna be a different bolt pattern. Feels good. All right, we can at least let the car down. I'm not going to worry about putting the back ones on right now. There are tires on the back of the car currently, just the, not the right ones. So let me uh, go grab the jack. All right, let's get this uh, jacked up and on the ground. cracking or anything like that so that's a good thing everything looks good fender to door gap looks really good this one's a hair big 
that's not a big deal. I'm gonna adjust that out a little bit afterwards. So let me uh, get in here and my buddy who owns this car, who sold it, he's out of the country right now on vacation. So I'll have to tell him when he gets back about that rim being wrong. I had to cut this radiator hose twice to get it to fit. It was too long. These are the original date coated uh, radiator hoses. Unfortunately, we don't have the right clamps because we went to order the clamps and they were on back order. So we're putting regular clamps on it for now and we can always change that out afterwards. But yeah, these have the GM stamp date code on them. Um, I even had to cut this upper one down a little bit and that spot, that's a little too kinked for me right there. So I think I need to take a little bit more off of this side just so it's not kinked. And like I said, I'll just have to, you know, at some point the radiator hoses, uh, clamps can always get changed out to the right ones. We use the correct spring ones on everything else. Um, they just didn't have these ones. So that's the least of my worries. I'm not too worried about that. It's an easy fix. Let's get this one tightened up. The ones I had here, they're a little bit long, so it takes a little bit to get them tightened. from where I already cut it from on the radiator side. I just use my knife and I get it through the hose, poke it through. Usually goes right through, but my knife might be getting dull. There we go. And just go around the hose nice and carefully. Try to cut it as straight as you can. I have hose cutters, but I don't think it'll cut up to this size hose. Pretty sure it doesn't. There we go. Grab these clamps. I always like my clamps to go the same direction. Beautiful. After this, I think I'm going to get the windshield back together, all that trim, and then we can move on to the uh, figuring out why we're not getting power under the dash, which I really didn't put a ton of time into looking at it. I just briefly plugged in the battery and I knew nothing was happening. Pretty much just called it quits right there.
Okay, it's good. All right. It's looking good. They opted for the glossy wheel wells and uh, air cleaner. Usually that's supposed to be like a satin finish. Same thing with the radiator support. And these gold bolts I put in there, um, they're supposed to be black. So I don't know if they're going to want me to change them or not. Nobody said anything. I just thought it would look kind of cool. But we'll see. So now you start putting the exterior trim back on. Um, start with the pillars because those have to go back on. I'm going to uh, put a little caulk in there first. So I'll come back here in a little bit. Okay, let's start putting this trim on. This is all sealed up now. It's been sitting for a little while. Um, trying to remember, I think this goes on first. At least that's what I'm gonna do. And we'll see if that's correct. so tight. There it goes. Okay. Now let's get this molding for this side. Put that one on. Make sure all my clips are in here. One clip fell out, but I think it's for the other side. We'll know here in a minute. Let me put some more lights on. gonna put one or two screws in here then I can line up the other side Struggling here. Okay. I'm just gonna put one in there. Go put that other pillar on. In case I have to slide that around, I don't want to get too carried away with uh, that.
I don't know that I had a screw for there. I gotta get one. I have a whole drawer of stainless steel screws. So that's not a big deal. Sometimes with these old cars, you'll notice uh, somebody had replaced a screw at one time and then the new screw isn't big enough to fit in the hole. So sometimes you gotta go up the screw size. Just all depends. You gotta slide this clip back in that fell out. Make sure I put it in the right way. screws on that side. Okay, now we'll go back to the other molding and work it from the uh, outside to the center. clip fell out. I gotta take the other side apart. It's laying in the cowl right there. I think I might be able to get away with just taking this, these two screws out. That sucks. I gotta find that sitting at the bottom of the fender. These little screws are sometimes be a pain in the butt. Right, I can get that one at least. Oh, I think that one screw might have fallen out of the fender bottom. So I still have three on the floor here. I wonder if it fell out and I didn't hear it hit the hot concrete. We'll know here in a minute. I am missing one or two of these clips. 
I believe there's one that's supposed to go right here, but I didn't have them all when I got the car. So I can only do so much with that. That's a very odd cliff. Wow. That's what sucks about stainless screws is they're, they're not magnetized. You can't magnetize them. should go in that other door jam or this door jam I forget uh oh I see it gotta get something to get it out I wonder if my knife will reach in there to get it nope I gotta go get a pick tool Let's see if we can fish this out of there. Jesus. I see it, but I can't get to it. Nice. I lost my tool. pick tool see if I can fit it in there see it all right let me try to find this I'll, I'll come back there's no point in recording me looking for a screw for 20 minutes found it i didn't want to leave it in there because it'd be going back and forth when you're making turns it'd be like tommy boy when they when he spilled the peanuts in the uh vents the heater vents up top done so that molding's on two sides are on we gotta put the top on still but that's fine we'll do that in a couple minutes um i have silicone out here to silicone those holes but next i want to put this on clips on that molding do there's that little tab that hangs out and it holds the back of this cowl up in the air so it doesn't fall down on the back side I gotta remember where I put the screws for these because I'm not sure
pretty sure this has a weather stripping that goes there. But I don't remember. I think there's one on the bottom of the hood. I don't remember. Okay, now we gotta put the windshield wiper arms on. Gotta put these uh, on first. Now these are labeled, I think. Thought they were left side. So, does that mean passenger side? Driver side's right side, I believe. gets this uh, weird shaped one first and then gets this one with these two slots in it which there's some tool that they make for this but like I said before I don't have it should probably get one I usually just carefully use a flathead screwdriver. That makes me nervous. I want to hit the paint. Okay, throw the windshield wipers back on. Okay, now we're gonna put that top bow piece on. I had to wait for the fire truck to go by. I was getting loud. It's the second one today out here. I live kinda out in the middle of nowhere. Very rare to see two fire trucks in one day go by. Okay, now we get that top piece on, and then we're done with the exterior trim of the dash, or the windshield. Then we gotta put the inside back together. I have some clear silicone here. Okay. 
Did I screw up? I did. This has got to go on before those sides, but I think I can just loosen them and, and put them out. Should have started from the top down. That's okay. I think it shouldn't be too big a deal. Just got to move it out a little bit. These can be a pain in the butt. I think I got two lined up. It's three. I've got some silicone on the chrome stainless I'm gonna have to get off. slide it into place here so I can get that end screws in first then I'll wipe off this silicone I'm using my shirt for most of it because I don't want to scratch this. I don't have a microfiber towel out here right now. But it's going to need another. Everything's going to need some polish put on it in the end. Okay, let's uh, stick these end pieces back on now.
dent out in this corner here. It's a little messed up. Okay, now I'm gonna put the nuts in the bottom of the boat. I'll do that off camera because really not much to see with it. They go in from through the bottom of the upper pillar into the trim. Okay, all the exterior trim is on. It's tightened down. Um, everything looks good. Don't see any cracks or any signs of anything like that. I just think it was a fluke. I just think it was something to do with the glass. So now I need to assemble the inside. This is off a little bit right here. See about that. Might have to move that in a little bit. I still have to put this weather stripping on the other side. I never did because that morning when I came out here and I saw that it was cracked, I just said to hell with it. So let me, uh, and also this upper bow on the inside, it was off a little bit when I had it installed because the uh, latches for the top wouldn't fit in right. So I had that metal off a little bit. So I need to pay more attention to that when I do it. Um, so I think I need to do is along the dashboard first, then the outside pillars or the inside pillars, and then the top last. I'm gonna mess with that for a couple minutes. I'll come back. Okay, I was in the wrong hole on this screw. So I was able to bring it in. Now I might have to take this back loose to fit that inner pillar piece in, but that's not a big deal. But yeah, this car has a lot of screw holes that are two, one here and there's one out there. Same thing with putting on that lower windshield molding. There was two holes for screws. Was that something that was done at the factory or did somebody take this off and put it back on at some other time and drilled another hole for some reason? I don't know, you know, that's type stuff I'm just not sure about. Um, I've done, like I said, I've done, probably four or five of these. And I can't remember, you know, I just can't remember any of them. And I haven't messed with one of these in over a year. So um, let me uh, work on the dash lower ones. We'll do that next. So let me get my parts uh, together and the screws and we'll put the pieces on around the dash and then we'll start with the side pillars. Okay, I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but I'm gonna start working on those pieces on the dash here, the lower, or the back part by the windshield. Just lightly set this up there. I think what I'm gonna do is just put one screw right there for now and do the same thing on the other molding because then I can lift this up on the end to slide it into the pillar. This is another thing is none of this stuff was installed on this car when I got it. It was literally in just a million pieces. The body was together, but nothing, no dash together, nothing. The guy had lost so much stuff and fortunately that happens.
Okay, those are released in position. Now this part, which I am dreading, this one not as much as that lower one, but I don't like messing with these. These are a real pain to get on. some trick to getting these on easier or what but I don't know what the trick is man I think that lower has got to go on first does it I just don't remember I think it could slide on after yeah I think this has got to go in first because it's got this tab that goes in here oh that one kind of went right in Unfortunately, I yanked out the other molding, but got that one went right in. Okay. Oh, that was easy. Must be the lower ones I was thinking about. Where the heck's that hole at? Maybe that this goes in first. I don't remember. It must have. Yeah, it's a lot of trial and error. I'm sure you 59 guys that are watching this know how this goes and probably yelling at the camera screen TV whatever you want to call it but I don't claim to be an expert at it that's for sure but I will figure it out Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera. Obviously, it's a little bit of monkeying around with, but I have this side pretty much lined up, so I can probably get this all screwed in to the center, and then I'll do the exact same thing on the other side and then screw to the center, and then I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like. There's probably going to be me 
So far, there's no real nicks that are visible. If there is any sort of a nick that's visible anywhere, I'll just probably airbrush it in, just a little tiny airbrushing, and or maybe even just a touch-up brush, depending on how bad it is. So I'll be back here shortly. Okay, I have the driver's side all together. I have the visor bracket on. This bracket for the um, convertible top latch is not the right bracket. It does not fit in there. So, I don't know. This is an aftermarket one. Could they have made it that far off? I don't know. But it definitely, there's like a half moon here, and it doesn't even fit. And it's not even big enough. Doesn't even, the holes don't even line up, so I don't know what the deal is with that. So we'll just put that off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and put the driver's side together now, or the passenger side together now, and then I'll have all that back together. Okay, I have uh, the other side all together. I went to put the rear view mirror on and the arm that holds the rear view mirror, the casting broke. So got to order a new one of those. And we're still looking for a latch to hold the trunk or the glove compartment shut. I don't have the latch for it. Whoever, the guy that owned the car that took it apart lost so many little parts like that and they're so hard to find. Um, so now I have to figure out some wiring um, after that, I think we'll be ready to start this. So I think I'll end this video here because I don't know what it's going to take to figure out the wiring. Wiring is going to be working under the dash and stuff. You're not really going to be able to see what's going on. So um, I'm going to end this one here. And uh, next video will be this thing running one way or another. So, all right, guys, that's the end of this video. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Other than that, I will see you guys later.